Hey YouTubers, Electric Adventures here with finally the next episode of my Let's Make a Retro Game. Um, unfortunately I've had many stalled attempts at getting this series going again, um, but I finally have done what I believe was enough prep work for us to continue. So our last two episodes were looking at the parts of the Z80 uh, assembly language so you could understand what I was going to do in these next parts. Now the aim of this episode, and it will be a fairly we'll get through a fair bit fairly quickly is to put together the parts of the game that form the background and to you know so a background display which is our fonts and um, background shapes and um, last thing we'll do is we'll just place our player ship on the screen um, so I've included files with this. This is the starting file. There's be two folders, one called start and one called end. So end will be our end result and start is our starting position. Um, and what I've done is I've done a completely cut down um, version of the template specifically ready for the game. Um, it has a little bit of setup done and we've got sections here where I can place some code and there are some included functions down the bottom which I won't go into detail um, but we might cover in another episode otherwise we'll run out of time. Now the very first thing we need to do is get our um, sprites and tiles that we're going to use in this game and put them in a format that uh, we can use in our code. So using my MSX sprite and tile editor um, down link down below. Now if you've downloaded this previously while following this course you may have to uninstall and reinstall it. Um, I'll just run the application. Um, it has changed. It has some new features and some changes around. I've done lots of upgrades um, and it now also has a proper signed certificate so you won't get any funny warnings. So there's the about with all of the details in there. But a donate button for those people who would wish to contribute to the cost of the certificate because it does actually cost a bit, bit of money. All right, so I've um, one I prepared earlier. So here's our sprite file. Um, so we have our main ship with two layers to give us two colors. I've just put some asteroids and smart bombs in there for later. We can always change those. Um, and then our character set, um, now the character set editor part of the spot editor has come along a fair way. I still wouldn't call it finished, but you can now edit tiles and set colors. And as you can see, I've used a bit of color so you can show the MSX and Coleco and original Spectre videos graphics capabilities a little better. So we have our normal uh, numbers and A to Z. We have a few shapes here that are going to be a mountain background. Um, we've got some items here which we use to display lives and things like that and there's a little Electric Adventures uh, logo section there as well and a black tile. Um, so what I'm go simply going to do is save this file as um, sorry I'm in the wrong folder so here we go so if we save it now it'll save it over the sprite definition. if we don't want to do that what we want to do is come down here and select assembler data file and let's call it Coleco Mega Blast and um, we'll call it tile tile set any matter what you call it, as long as you know what it is. Now it does include uh, the sprites as well. Okay, so we've done that, so you can close this, the editor now. Now we need to include that file. Now, by the way, I'm using a new editor here because it's, um, it has a much nicer syntax highlighting. You can still continue to use the one I took through through the beginning. This one's called Sublime. Um, text, I'll put in details about setting this up when I get a time at a later stage but it's using the context text editor you'll get a similar thing just this is a lot more colorful and um, hopefully will make it easier for you to read now we need to include the um, the file we just made so notice we've got where we include the libraries here now as I said I'm going to just to make this a little faster 
I'm going to copy and I called it something different before so anyway I'm just going to pop it here call it patterns which is probably actually a better name but we've called it tile set so we'll call that tile set there and that simply includes it in our um, code so the, and we go and have a look at the tile set and you can see it has um, created a section for every sprite now remember like the main ship pattern is made out of two sprites they're going to sit over the top of each other all of our other sprites and then we get to our tile set now by default since I haven't named them or anything it'll be tile set one and then pat for the patterns and you can see there's lots of empty space in there and tile set one col for the color data and there's 255 of each of those but most of it's empty but that doesn't matter okay we'll go back to our main code um, now we need to um, we're just going to put in a variable so going back to the top of our code I'm just going to put this in here this is basically the number of sprites we have in our, our, our data file um, and now coming down so this section of the um, template just is, is all of our setup stuff so setting up the sound so we don't get funny sounds, setting up our screen mode getting the controls ready randomizing our random numbers and creating our timers that control how everything's displayed and we've got our game divided into two sections the title screen and the main screen so let's do the title screen first so I'll grab a little snippet of code okay so this first little bit here we're going to call load char set which we'll have a look at in a minute and then we'll display the characters on the screen so our screen is 32 characters wide and 24 lines so by putting it here it's easy to see how much data we're copying without putting I mean the number is 768 but this makes it a little easier to understand so VRAM name is a na what's called a name table in our video RAM and that just basically says which every every tile on the screen uh, which ca character pattern is it going to use alright now we've obviously called this function so we need to add it so let's go down here just before another function we've got here called init RAM and we'll grab our function and pop it in there so what this does is it loads our patterns it's already got tile set pat one and tile set one color so it loads our patterns and our colors into each of the three areas on the screen so on the MSX and Coleco you actually can have a different pattern table for each 256 characters going down the screen but in our case we're going to have the same shapes for all three so I won't take you through the exact things of the functionality of this function, we'll just assume it works. Now just one thing we need to change here, uh, we haven't declared this, so I'm just going to change this to 256, because that's how many, uh, oh actually 255, sorry, um, that's how many patterns we're loading, and most of them are blank. Um, we could have loaded a specific number, it doesn't matter, and it'll just help wipe out the rest of the um, uh, of memory, so it's zero right so down past these functions and things like that near our where we included our file we're going to once again this will be in the end right in at the end files so what this is this is our title screen pattern that we're going to put on the screen so each one of the two rows and I've done that so it fits on without us having to scroll says what character is going to be that position so you can see most of it is all zeros all zeros and here look here's one that says put character and I've done this in decimal to make it easier to read put character 23 here and then nothing 
and then character 15 and then nothing and character 17 and then nothing. Now um, if we went and had a look at our tile set what's character 27? So character 27 is this pattern here. Um, actually I'm not going to switch back to the tile set editor. We'll, we'll see what it looks like in a minute. So we've got some text up here um, and then another section down here and I've labelled here press fire to begin so that's what that says press fire to begin and then we've got Electric Adventures logo down the bottom here now so we should be right to actually compile this now let's just check right it generated it and it says OK down the bottom so I'm going to open Blue MSX and I'm going to insert the start here and Mega Blast ROM that's been created and there we go it's displayed our Mega Blast text a um, little bit of mountainscape press fire to begin and electric adventures so let's go back to our code so we've achieved something and it hopefully it looks quite nice so that's this section of code here so every time we go to draw a large amount of information to the screen we need to disable the interrupts because um, otherwise um, the interrupt might fire when you're in the middle of copying a large amount of data and it might go it might go stranger so clear pattern clears that name table so it makes all the screen look at pattern zero but then we load our character set and then we fill the pattern up with the patterns that we defined below we have a little loop here where we call the joystick to clear the joystick buffer um, we set up the NMI hook that we're going to use I'm not going to explain that in too much detail um, setting a level variable there, sorry, a bit of leftover code there so, and this is a little bit of a loop so we call the joystick we see whether a button has been pressed and if if it has this will be zero and then we'll jump down here to start a new game then we wait for a half second timer to fire otherwise we just go around um, and we can add some maybe some extra actions here on the title screen so we can have some little animations going on the title screen later so that's all set up ready to go for us later now we need to move on to our main screen um, so the first thing to do before I do the code also another good thing about Sublime it shows you where parts are so you can easily see and get to um, where sections are now I'm going to copy in our main layout so this is the layout of the main screen and feel free in your own version to once we've you know got this going to change some of these layouts and put some other characters in so we have most of the screen is going to be blank here for the moment there's a little bit of um, background information there. We've got a planet surface running along there, and this is our score and life area. I've set some values in there, and I've put the EA logo down the bottom. Now we need to just like we did before. In our main screen set up here. We need to. Sorry, just grabbing the code. Right. Now we need to do, we also need to send our sprites and send our layout. So after our init RAM, pop it in there. So the first thing we're going to do is send our sprite patterns to the video RAM. They exist in a different spot. Um, once again we're going to use one of our defined um, includes here they're all in the include file that are included in the template um, our first sprite is main chip so that's the start of our sprite data and each sprite pattern is 32 bytes long and um, we do that times the number of sprites we want to load um, and I call that load into video RAM then we load our character set again because later on we might actually want to have a different character set for the screen so we never know so it's best to start from scratch and then we call our main layout to display our main title um, now coming down to a little bit more setup so then we come into the main screen we clear the joystick so that uh, we don't get any false reads um, this is just setting up a random seed value 
based on the amount of time that passed between when the title screen was, dis was displayed and somebody pressed a button. It's a really good way of initialising random numbers. Once again, we disable the interrupts again. Um, set the last score flag. That's so that it doesn't try to draw the um, score on the screen every every time it has an interrupt. And then we turn our interrupts back on again. Okay, but what I'm going to do is actually I've only just realised I've done. Yeah, there we go. So let's grab that. Oops, grabbed a little bit too much. Um, we're just going to put the main characters, uh, the main ship sprite, on the screen as well. So pop that in there. So set the position of the player ship. So we load 150 in A and set the Y, which is the first position in the sprite table, to A. And then the, the second sprite, which is underneath, we want to be in exactly the same spot. We put 120 in A, and then we put that in position 1 of each of the sprites. So that's our X coordinate. Uh, we X or A, which is a really quick way of making A0. And we put that one, and that's our colour. Um, no, sorry, our pattern. Into the next position in the sprite. And then we want A to be 4. For, to be, grab the next pattern in a row and then we set our two colours of each of the sprites and we call a function, one of the ones we've defined earlier which is display lives um, and then pretty much we have our loop and we should be right to go so let's compile again just to make sure I haven't made any mistakes no, we're all good so run blue msx now we've already run selected that ROM so we can just press play so we've got our Mega Blast, I'm going to press space and we go to our next screen and we have our ship down the bottom. So we've made some progress um, and um, you know, hopefully you've learnt a little bit along the way. As I said, I'm not going to go too much into the detail of the code because I want to get a bit done each episode. Um, there'll probably be a little bit more explanation in the next episode when we make the ship move left and right and fire a bullet up the screen. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Let's Make a Retro Game. Um, I will try and get them uh, out there a little bit more regularly from now on. All right, I'm Electric Adventures. Thanks to all my subscribers. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.